climate. You requested coaching? I requested somewhere no one else wants oh, to go. Okay. My English teaching salary was gonna be about half, half. Oh. Looking at the salary in USD, I was like, this is poverty. I had never seen non-Asian person until age of like 13. You almost feel like a famous person. Like, I didn't want to move to Tokyo, to be honest. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another NRJ video. My name is Shota and today we're talking about whether uh, people should live in a city or in a rural area in Japan, especially when you first move to Japan. So I don't think there's anybody more qualified to talk about this topic than today's guest, Amber, aka Chef in Japan. Please welcome Amber. Hello. Yay. <laughs> so Amber, what are you doing in Tokyo? Why'd you come to Japan? It's a good question. <laughs> I think um, the reason I came to Japan might be a little different than most people. Okay. So when I was in New York, I went to a culinary school and it was kind of a health culinary school. So a little different than a regular one. Okay. So we were kind of learning how to cook like vegan and gluten-free. And one of the ways that we learned to cook was with Japanese ingredients because oh. they're really flavorful. So if you want to make healthy food delicious, Japanese ingredients are a great way. Okay. So we used like yuzu, umeboshi, oh, wow. kombu, and I fell in love with these ingredients. I was using them every day. And so I started becoming interested in Japan because I wanted to know more about the country mm. where these like ingredients that I loved came from. So I decided as a graduation trip to myself when I went to, when I finished culinary right. school, I went to Japan and I did a solo backpack trip for two weeks. Oh wow. Before my trip I started studying Japanese and I became so interested in the language. It was so challenging and, and kind of fun. I liked the kanji so yeah that became my hobby. Okay. And when I finally got to like travel here and use the Japanese it was so much fun. Like I, I just was able to basically mm. like order coffee but yeah. people were like oh, jose. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it gave me a lot of confidence like yeah I want to learn more yeah. and become more jozu. Yeah. So um, yeah I ended up coming back again then studying more I went to like a not an a kaiwa Nihon kaiwa how do you say uh, a Japanese language conference Nihon go gakko. Nihon go gakko, yeah, like Japanese a Japanese school, school yeah. like twice a week after work and um, kept going with it and um, I really loved studying and then I came here again the next year and my Japanese mm. had like improved a little okay. bit and so I was able to speak a little more and like gave me more encouraging I got more josus yeah um, josus <laughs> so Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was gonna ask that, like, how, how did you end up in Kochi? Because, I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm from Shikoku, so I represent, but it's a, it's a, it's a rather random place to be in because yeah. it's a small. Your, your job brought you to Kochi, or? So, yeah, Kochi is one of the Japan's prefectures, and it's on the smallest of Japan's four main islands. Mm. So there's Honshu, the main island where like Tokyo is and stuff. And then there's also a smaller island called Shikoku, which is in the west of Japan. Right. And so that's where Kochi is. Super yeah. rural, no one's heard of it, but everyone should hear about it because I think it's a really great place. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I moved to Kochi mm. because I worked for a company. Um, it's a big Eikaiwa company called Eon, and they oh. had um, they have actually schools all over Japan. Right. So when they you get it. hired, they ask you like, where do you want to live? They're like, do you like cold climate, warm climate? You requested Kochi. I requested, I requested somewhere no one else wants oh, to okay. go. <laughs> oh yeah, and you, you, you did get it. Then. I got it, yeah. and it was the best experience. I okay. feel like that's good. Kochi is my Japanese hometown. People are so friendly there. There's not as many foreigners, so people are still like excited to yeah. see foreigners <laughs> and like to talk to you. Yeah. You almost feel like a famous person, like everywhere I went. Oh yeah, uh, growing yeah. up, I had never seen non-Asian person until age of like 13. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, people like come up to me and then they're just like, why are you here? Can you teach me English? Like, <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> yeah, literally, they're like, what are you oh. doing? They're like, Kochi? Like, <laughs> it's probably what you got when you were in like Wyoming. People are probably like, why are you here? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess like Americans are more used to concept of oh, like, really? yeah. As a New Yorker, I'd be like, why? why? <laughs> no offense, why I'm in people, right, I'm sorry. Right. No offense, I love why. I'm sure it's great. Yeah, yeah he loves it. Yeah. But um, why did you choose Wyoming? Um, well, um, I did a uh, senior year of high school in Michigan. Oh, oh my pretty, gosh. Pretty, which is pretty random. Yeah. Uh, I worked on a dairy farm and everything. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what? and then I moved to the West Coast. Okay, uh, California. Northern California, a city called Fremont, I present. But I wasn't able to afford to live there anymore because it's in it's the expensive. midst of uh, Silicon Valley. And, right. um, but I really wanted to finish my bachelor's degree. So mm -hmm. like I had to go somewhere cheaper. That's Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah, <laughs> that's where Wyoming came uh, into the picture. Yeah. Got it. But and why did you move to Kyoto? 
I moved to Kochi because I wanted to have kind of a real Japan experience. Mm. I wanted to be somewhere where it's warm, first of all, because I don't like the cold. Kochi is very warm. Yeah, Kochi is nice and warm.、Um, I'm one of those rare people who does not mind the summer in Japan,、mm. but I do mind the winter. Actually, Tokyo's winter is not as bad as like Kyoto's. I don't think it's as bad. I'm not as like freezing. I remember last year being like freezing.、Okay. This year, I'm like, it's all, it's all right. It's up and down. Bad. I moved to Kochi to have that experience, and I loved that experience. And I really didn't want to leave Kochi, to be honest. But it is not well connected to the rest of Japan.、Right. One of the reasons why I actually moved here is because my hobby is like kokunai ryoko.、Mm. Like, I like traveling within Japan, and you can't really do that in Kochi. Out、um, of Kochi, of it's only... very difficult. Yeah. Travel in Kochi and in Shikoku, which are great. It was great for one year. I got to see so many parts of、right. Shikoku, but I wanted to explore more of Honshu, and I also really wanted to improve my Japanese. And I felt as an English teacher, I didn't, I couldn't do that because I had to speak English.、Right. I think if you're on the JET program or maybe an ALT, you have more of an opportunity to speak Japanese because you can talk with your coworkers.、Okay. But my company had a policy where I wasn't allowed to speak Japanese even with my Japanese coworkers. So I was the only foreigner、really? in the whole company, but I couldn't. Speak Japanese even in the office if there was no students around.、Huh. It kind of made sense though. They wanted my my coworkers were also English teachers and they wanted them to hear my accent.、Okay. So it made sense,、yeah, but I still I、so. didn't like it.、Sure. I of course no, wanted、fair. to speak. Fair, yeah, yeah, I wanted to speak Japanese. So working part time at a tea cafe, I moved to Tokyo because I got a job. I didn't want to move to Tokyo to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I really like. Yeah, bad, I mean it's fine. It's、yeah. it's great. I'm sure a lot a lot of people love it. But I'm more of a nature girl, so like、mm. I liked Kansai and Shikoku.、Right. But yeah, I got a job, and it required me to move to Tokyo, so I moved here. So the first thing I want to talk about is cultural immersion and community. So the first question is, how does the choice between rural and urban living impact one's cultural immersion in Japan? There's a big Difference、mm. in between city and rural.、Uh, I can only speak from my own experience, but I think in a rural setting, you have a lot more opportunity for cultural immersion. In Tokyo, it's a very international city,、mm. so and it's also a really big city.、Mm. So it's very easy to get in an English-speaking bubble, like、right. in a bubble where you're only hanging out with foreigners and like all of your friends are other foreigners. So, but when you're in the countryside, there's not as many foreigners. Right. So your community around you is going to be all local people.、Mm. From my experience in Kochi, especially Kochi, I think people are so welcoming and so warm, and they're really excited to have someone new there, and they want to show you their culture and share it with you. So I think you have a lot more opportunity to experience, like I hate to say, the real Japan. Yeah, but like、yeah. the real Japan,、um, if you're living in a more rural area versus the city. Okay. Would you say do you generally recommend people, especially people that are coming here for the first time, to、yeah. live in rural area if they are seeking out for? More tight community. Oh yeah, if like you are looking for that cultural immersion, then I definitely would recommend the countryside rather than Tokyo. But I do don't think it's for everyone. Right. Also, I think there are some people who would not be happy、mm. <laughs> in the countryside.、Um, it's definitely a specific type of person who really enjoys that kind of. Community thing, and there's also the aspect of loneliness when you first、right. move to Japan. When you first move there, it is super lonely. Like you haven't really connected with the community、mm. yet, and that's a really hard part. That's probably the hardest part I think、yeah. about moving to a new country alone. So, what kind of person would be perfect for a place like Kochi, like tightly、yeah. knit community? It has to be someone who like loves nature、mm. and loves like the idyllic like scenes. Like if you are into like the Studio Ghibli countryside scenes, and you want to live in those scenes, like it's for you, the countryside.、Okay. Um, also, yeah, for people who want to connect with、um, local people more and learn about small local traditions.、Mm. Yeah, I think some people who might be happier in Tokyo are the people who come to Japan more for the pop culture.、Right. So like. Anime and、um, J-pop stuff like that. You'll you probably be happier in Tokyo rather than the countryside. That's true. So the next thing I want to talk about is learning the language. Obviously, learning Japanese is obviously important for yeah <laughs>、uh, a lot of people. But do you think it's easy to learn Japanese in a rural area or in a city? 
That's a good question. Mm. There's actually a lot of things that go into this. I think it's easier to have conversations with people and get more Japanese practice in a rural area where less people speak English. Okay. But <laughs> if you don't have that foundation of Japanese, it might be hard to just like learn it through that, like through experience. I think you do need a like formal foundation for、mm. it because it is such a hard language. Maybe that would work if you're in a country like if you're coming from an English speaking country and you're going to like Spain and you're learning Spanish. But with Japanese, it's so hard. I think that foundation, like that formal education, is kind of important.、Mm. Which you cannot really get、right. in rural Japan, or you couldn't get it in rural Japan.、Mm. But now you kind of can. Now that we have the internet, and、right. there's like Japanese language classes online, which I was taking when I was in Kochi. I had a private online tutor,、okay. so it's not impossible if you can get that formal education online and then like go out into the world and the countryside、mm. and use it. That's probably the best situation. The bad thing.、Mm. Is when you are in the countryside, you're probably an English teacher. Right. That's what the opportunities are. <laughs> you're probably an English teacher, which means you could be working a lot,、mm. and you're not allowed to speak Japanese. Well, it depends on the company. For my company, from my experience, I wasn't allowed to speak any Japanese while I was working, which was ten hours a day. Really. So I was in an English-speaking bubble for ten hours a day. I would go home at night and take my lesson, and then, yeah, I didn't have as much of an opportunity、oh, to、okay. use it. Were you a jet? No, I worked for a private、um, Ekaiwa、okay. school. That's called, back in Shikoku, right? Yeah, back in Kochi. That's how I first got here.、Um, I taught English for one year. Okay. So yeah, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Whereas in the city, they do have the Japanese language schools that、right. you can attend full time. So I would say I kind of wish I did it the opposite. I first lived in the rural place, and then like I went to the Japanese language school.、Mm-hmm. I wish I had that. Formal education first.、Right. For anyone who might be in college or anything, my advice would be definitely study Japanese while you're in college.、Mm. And if you have that formal education, then when you move to the rural place, you'll be able to use it, and your Japanese will go like this.、Oh, so. Okay. Do you think you, your your Japanese improve more while you were in Kochi or Kyoto or? Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo. My level's going down like this. Really? Why? <laughs>、um, there's just not as many opportunities to speak、oh, Japanese.、Okay. Yeah, everyone speaks English here. Right. But、um, yeah, so I haven't had as many opportunities. Like even my Japanese friends in Tokyo are so good at English. Their English is better、mm. than my Japanese, so we end up using、right. English. But when I was living in Kyoto, I was going to Japanese language school full time.、Okay. So I was three hours a day. As soon as I like the first words I spoke that day were Japanese. Everything I heard for the first three hours of my day was in Japanese. Japanese, that really helped my language. I would say that was the difference between like not being able to speak and、mm. being able to speak. So, but I do wish that I had that education before I moved to Kochi, so I could have used it more and learned more when I was、okay. there. It's kind of complicated.、Yeah. I hope it makes sense. So the next thing I want to talk about is is getting job easier in the rural area or in the city. It really depends.、Mm. So I think if you're coming to Japan from overseas, your only opportunities for rural Japan are going to be teaching English. Your only opportunities, even if coming to a city, are probably mostly、mm. <laughs> teaching English, unless you're、so. into tech. Yeah. Or if you're coming from a company that has like a branch in Tokyo that you can transfer to. Other than that, yeah, you're gonna probably come in as an English teacher if you're from a native English-speaking country,、um, or what they consider a native English-speaking country at the company. After you've taught English for about a year, you've probably made connections in the area, and you can branch off to other things. So I actually knew someone who did jet for two years,、mm. and then he was looking for jobs, and he really liked the town that he lived in. He wanted to continue living there, but he didn't want to necessarily. Necessarily teach English again,、right. so he had a connection with an owner of a、mm. sake brewery who offered him a job to、oh. do like kind of some advertising in English. So there's definitely opportunities once you're there and you've made connections. But of course, Tokyo is gonna—it's the biggest city in yeah, Japan. Yeah. It's gonna have the most diverse range、mm. of opportunities. But I have also met someone like an earthquake scientist who is living in Kochi. Oh wow. Who terrified me about the Nankai mega thrust? You're an earthquake <laughs> scientist. Come to Kochi. Yeah, so there's there are opportunities. They exist,、mm. but they are far and few in between.、Right. And you do have to have that first foundation of like building your network. Right. So, but yeah, in Tokyo, there's a lot more diverse range of opportunities.、Mm. So like after you've taught English for a year and you want to look for something else, maybe closer to your field. Tokyo is the place to be for that, definitely.、Okay. But what about you? I know you lived in the U.S. Did you work there? Was it easy to find jobs, or were you I did, just? I、student? did an internship at、oh, okay. 
、okay. the university. So like, I might not be the best candidate to talk about this. But I guess, I guess, in terms of living in the states, yeah,、uh, as a as a non English speaker like myself, um, it would be definitely easier to live in a city like New York City,、right. uh, you know, the cities and、uh, the West Coast. Yeah, because、um, I lived in Wyoming. So、uh, the university, <laughs> Wyoming. right? Wyoming, exactly. So、uh, university was the only, pretty much only place to to work. But yeah,、uh, I can only speak for Japanese people. But、uh, Japanese people trying to find work in the states. The answer is pretty straightforward. It's the city, unless you have. Like family or spouse、oh, in、yeah. Wyoming or <laughs> Michigan or、right. you know wherever. So yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. So now I want to talk about cost of living.、Mm. Do you think overall living in、uh, a city is cheaper or living in a rural、uh, area is cheaper? So actually, compared to the U.S., the cost of living in Japan is so much lower. I was really surprised because when I looked at my salary for an English teacher compared to when I left New York, I was actually、mm. working. Full time as a sous chef for a startup company in New York. So I wasn't working in a restaurant; I was working at a company. My English teaching salary was going to be about half of what my starting salary、right. at this company was.、Yeah. So looking at the salary in USD, I was like, "This is poverty. How am I going to live、it、like、is. this?" But if you look at it compared to what the cost of living was in Japan, it actually was no different. So、right. my salary in New York, with the cost of living in New York, which is Very, notoriously very high. Yeah. yeah, notoriously high, was the same. I was actually able to save money. While I was working full time as an English teacher in the countryside. Now I don't know if I would be able to save that much money living in Tokyo,、mm. just if because of how high the rent is here compared、right. to the countryside. So would you say the biggest difference is the rent? The rent, yeah. So in Kyoto, I had a three-bedroom apartment、um, in Kyoto City, and I was paying less money than I'm paying right now for a one room in Tokyo. Okay. Three bedrooms. I went from like this spacious、What? apartment to this like room. Right, Tokyo apartments are notoriously small. So small, yeah. yeah. But what about like transportation? Because I assume that like you needed a car back in Kochi or in Kyoto. Yeah, I actually didn't need a car.、Oh. So in Kochi, the city I was living in, it was called Kochi City. Kochi City. It was pretty accessible by bicycle, so I was able to get anywhere I needed to by bicycle. The mall, Starbucks, <laughs> my job, everything I needed was、mm. in bicycling、okay. distance. Where you do need the car is if you want to go sightseeing. I obviously did, so I luckily had a lot of friends who had cars, my coworkers, and you will meet a lot of people if you're living in the countryside who want to show you the major sightseeing、right. places of that、yeah. area. So it's not really a problem. I wouldn't buy a car just to go. Sightseeing, but I think my situation might be a little unique because、mm-hmm. Kochi City was the biggest city in Kochi. So even Ko- though Kochi is considered like Inaka、uh, rural, it's still a city. It's still a city, yeah. So, but I think there's definitely some people, especially if you're on the JET program, if you're an ALT, you might be placed in like the middle of a rice field, in which case you need a car, and that's an expense you won't have in Tokyo. And cars in Japan, having a car in Japan is so expensive.、Mm. It was shocking to me.、Um, I think you have to get an ex- An inspection every year that's close to like two thousand USD, and in the It, US、yeah. it's like twenty dollars. So it's like a huge difference. Yeah. So yeah, that's an expense. But I still think because of how cheap the rent is, it's still cheaper to live to in live a in rural, rural area. To, okay. I think. So. Okay. So I want to ask you one last question. Okay. If you were to start all over, would you still start in Kochi? Oh, one hundred percent, yes. <laughs> I am not making her. <laughs> this is not an advertisement、yeah. for Kochi, though.、No. I feel like it should be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I loved my first experience in Japan with the company I worked for. I think I've heard a lot of mixed experiences.、Mm-hmm. I think you kind of just get lucky if you get placed in a good school. I was placed in a really good school. I loved Kochi. My job was great. My coworkers were great, and just the town I lived in was so good. I feel like it's my Japanese hometown since it's the first place I lived、right. in Japan. So I feel really attached to it, and I actually go back there often. I go to visit. I go to see the festivals. So yeah. 
I, I really, I would definitely do that again. The only thing I would change is I wish I could go back in time and study Japanese in college and、oh. high school so that I wouldn't have to go to Japanese language school here. It's definitely better to have that foundation before you start living in.、Mm. You don't need it. Like, if you don't have it, don't make that stop you from moving to Japan. But I definitely would prefer. That is the thing I would change if I could do yeah, it again. Okay. So,、uh, that's about it for today. By the way, if you haven't checked out Amber's channel, it's called Chef in Japan. And、please go check out.、Uh, we'll put something here somewhere in the, in the description. Yeah, I make videos about life in Japan, how to move to Japan, how to get an English teaching job in Japan, and also like travel stuff here. So if you are interested in that, I'd love to connect with you. Send me a comment if you've found my channel from this interview. Yeah. I, yeah, I want to see that. Yeah,、um, I've been、uh, following her channel and、uh, Instagram page. It's awesome, very insightful and helpful. It's true, it's true. <laughs> please go check that out. All right,、uh, that's about it for today. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye.